and we are, Florian is a professor, we are working with him. Uh, he's helping us doing this. Um, so specifically what, did, what we did in the project is that we implemented CTC um, using C++ for GPU. Is this working? Um, and as an application, we used the biodirectional um, LSTMs to, uh, and on top of that, the CTC to do spoken term detection um, on a low resource language, which is Zulu. Um, so I will um, first introduce the approach. So deep learning uh, for speech recognition is, deep learning are like giving the state of the art performance in acoustic modeling. Um, so typically, uh, the pipeline of speech recognition uh, isolates the language modeling from the acoustic modeling from the, uh, and uses HMM for sequence uh, modeling. But recently, there have been uh, trials to uh, build an end-to-end -end speech recognition um, using uh, uh, neural networks. Uh, so these are like the two more recent paper, papers that uh, introduce an end-to-end -end speech recognition system, uh, which uh, only uses a, a language model but does all the inference without the language model. Um, uh, so the general problem uh, that speech recognition is uh, is considered one of is uh, the sequence labeling. labeling. In sequence labeling, the input is um, is a sequence of features. Uh, it could be speech or handwriting recognition, and the output should be some another sequence of uh, of another sequence of another length. So um, this could be uh, a speech, and the output sh could be like um, a stream of characters. So how to do this using neural networks? Um, we first will talk about recurrent neural networks. Um, recurrent neural networks uh, are special types of neural networks that has recurrent connections. So um, the input layer um, is connected to the hidden layer, and then the hidden layer is connected to the hidden layer and the input layer, so it kind of remembers what happens in the previous time steps. And then the output is a function of the hidden layer, um, and sometimes also from the input layer. Um, so how to train an RNN? So you can give it um, a sequence of input um, and at each input, you should give it what is the target output that it should be. It should output then, and then um, you can train it using backpropagation through time um, uh, by like unfolding it and backpropagating the error at each time step, um, as if it is a very deep network. Um, this introduces problems when the, there is like a, a long dependencies in the input. Um, so this this what makes RNNs not applicable, like for for more uh, for a lot of time in uh, in practice. Um, there have been several solutions to solve the long ra long range dependencies. Um, one of them was the long short term memory. Um, the long short term memory is 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 slightly different. Is like completely different from the. Um, the typical RNN in that it defines um, a memory cell. So the hidden layer is not a, a collection of neurons, it's a collection of memory cells. And the network learns how to, what should it remember and what should it forget in order to uh, uh, minimize the loss function. Um, so all these, um, so this is like one memory cell. Um, which has uh, the forget gate, the input gate, and the output gate. Um, I'm not gonna go, go into details of this training this thing, but I'm just gonna like say what is the the LSTM. Um, so the basic problem with training an RNN is that you need to um, you need to tell it what it should output at eight, at every time step. So you should give it a sequence, if, you, if, if the input is a sequence of 100 um, speech frames, you should tell it what it should output in every uh, frame of, uh, of these 100 frames. So if you have uh, 100 speech, speech frames and your output is just hello, you cannot tell the net, you need to tell the network when it should output H and when it should output E and when it should output L and so forth. So see, this makes it um, hard to, 
uh, to directly apply to sequence labeling tasks. Uh, so what connectionist temporal classification does is that it, it tries to solve or solves this problem. Um, and this is the, the thing that we implemented on GPUs. Um, how does it solve this? Because we, we don't know the alignment. So assume that we have a speech, um, a speech wave file contains like cat. Uh, someone is pronunciating cat. So and the output, the target output is CAT. So we want to train the network to output CAT. So we are not sure. We, we don't know when did he, when did he said C and when did he said A and when did he said T. So we try we um, uh, like consider the the whole possible alignments and then sum over all these possible alignments and then we get a close. Uh, closed formula for the probability of all these possible alignments and then ma maximize this probability. So uh, I will quickly grow, go through the equations that we implemented. Um, it's, uh, so this, this uh, details were mentioned in this paper. Uh, it's a pretty old paper, but this, this is the, the CTC is used in the two uh, recent papers that we referred to in the beginning. Um, so the first we 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 define a, a function the, the b function uh, which is uh, which um, um, which takes a sequence of input and then uh, co um, collapses it or I mean uh, removes all the repetitions um, and output this. So so after introducing a blank label. This label is like an, ad an additional label to the set of labels that we have. Um, so if the, out if, the, if the network outputs were A blank blank A B, so this means that the output is A A B. If the network output is A A blank blank A B B, it's, it's, a, it's the same. Um, so and then the probability of a specific labeling given the input is a summation over all the possible network output that can be reduced to this labeling after repeat, after removing the repetitions. Uh, um, CTC uses dynamic programming to compute this efficiently. Um, and like similar to HMM, they define forward and backward variables and then define the probability of this given um, sequence, uh, which is the training sequence, to be um, uh, in terms of the alphas and betas, and then uh, and then get a close formula for the gradient of this. Um, so, given that if the uh, if the input is if the training input is CAT, uh, we we define this ar we we have this array that um, to the mentioned earlier that we will define alphas and betas at every time step, and um, and then. So this is the forward variables. Are we have? Really hurry up because you're by a factor of two already. Okay. So so. You've already used ten. Okay. So. Okay. So quickly, this is the equations. I will not have time to go into it. This is the forward variables. This is the backward variables. I mean by, and then this is the. Um, the the gradient with respect to the the variables the forward and backward variables and um, like this is the sample output of the of the network uh, from the paper and then Tony will talk about this okay so beyond the the theory of uh, recurring neural network, we also need to care about the system. So using GPU to train neural network has already become uh, the industry standard because GPU, uh, the deep learning uh, training time is very long and using GPU can uh, massively accelerate the process. And uh, so the reason why is GPU can allow parallelization in matrix operation in the, in the, in the calculation. Also, it can also parallelize the calculation among the uh, sequence in a one mini batch in stochastic gradient descent. Um, so our implementation is on the open source framework called Current, 
and it's in C++, and we, our job is to implement the CTC algorithm Maham just described. And our implementation is about a thousand lines of code, and we try to use CUDA thrust to uh, simplify the coding, because um, GPU coding is very, it's quite complicated. And also we you try to use parallel code programming to uh, make the, uh, the, the programming more efficient, so we can uh, spot in uh, bugs when other, the other is, uh, is doing the, the programming. Also, we're using uh, Bitbug for source version control. So the challenging, uh, here are some challenges we met uh, during our implementation. First of all, is debugging GPU is not trivial. Uh, the first of all, the, ma the memory man management is quite tricky because there's two copies of memory in one GPU, one in CPU, and you cannot print out the value or you cannot break in the GPU memory. So you have to, you know, mem copy from GPU to CPU and CPU to GPU. And the, the mem copy is also a quite a costly operation. And also, in order to uh, use the CUDA uh, parallelized uh, library, we have to flatten our high dimensional matrix into a vector. So the indexing is also quite complicated. We have one minute left. Okay. So here, so also we said that uh, the running time is, is very long because even with GPU, one iteration needs to take two hours, so we cannot see result very quickly. And we also need to optimize code for CUDA. So here, the, the, so here's our final task. We're trying to apply the R uh, on the sp uh, spoken tone detection problem, which is to finding a term in a large audio corpus. So here is a just sample graph. We, you know, we want to see, looking for the word uh, yes we can, so we find the odd occurrence in the large corpus. So this is the task. So and uh, our proposed and we want to do this in a low resource language called Zulu. It's an African language. Okay. So I, here, your time yeah. is up. Okay. You cannot present anymore. You've okay. gone over time by a factor of three. I'm sorry uh, because they will pick us up. Yeah, okay. Sure. So okay. quick feedback. Uh, first of all, great slides, wonderful slides for a 20 minute talk. Totally unsuitable for a five minute talk. So feedback for. Uh,